This is the new Mercedes EQS, and this is the new Mercedes S-Class. And in this video, we're gonna find out which is best, electric-powered luxury or piston-powered luxury. Now, to do that, I'm gonna compare these cars' designs, the interiors, the exteriors, their practicality, their comfort levels, the kind of kit they've got on them. Obviously, I'm gonna take them for a drive, see what they're like. We're also gonna launch them, time them from 0 to 60 and over the standing quarter mile. Also gonna compare their braking, now, as well as that, I'm going to compare their energy usage. This car has a full battery and it's got 434 miles of range. This car has a full petrol tank and it's got 418 miles of range. Now, we're going to drive these cars from Mercedes Benz's headquarters here in Milton Keynes all the way to our drag strip. We're going to drag race them and then we're going to go on to Wales, over 100 miles to Wales, to a racing circuit. Then we're going to hoon them around the racing circuit and we're going to see how much energy they use doing all of that. It's going to be interesting and a very long day. Let's do it. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. We're leaving Mercedes-Benz and Milton Keynes, and the first thing I'm gonna do is play a trick on the guy in the S-Class, because, well, this EQS has rear-wheel steering, which makes it dead easy to go round and round in circles, because the turning circle's good. He doesn't have rear-wheel steering, because you can't get it on the S-Class in the UK for some reason. So he might struggle to get round in one go. Can he do it? Can he do it? Oh, what's going on, mate? What's going on? Can you do it? I think you're struggling there a little bit. Come on, can you make it around that bit? Oi! How did you manage to get around there? Uh, I just used my cameras. I could see my wheels as well, so it made it a little bit easier, but it was tight. <laughs> he was very brave. Look, I can actually turn inside the turning circle of your car. Anyway, let's head out now. Let's head out. Go on. Right. Trick computers. Reset. Heading off to the drag strip. So this thing is supposed to be able to do 483 miles on a full charge, although it's calculating what it's likely to do based on previous driving, so just a little bit less, 434 it was. That S-Class is supposed to do 32 miles to the gallon and it's got a 76 litre fuel tank that works out roughly to about 520 miles. But once again, based on the actual previous driving, it's worked out that the range is 418 miles on a full tank. But let's see, let's get to the drag strip, see how much range we've got before we start drag racing and then after we've been drag racing. It's gonna be interesting. After a drive of 22 miles, we've arrived at our airfield where you're gonna film some drag race videos and also time these cars from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. So the EQS has arrived here with 400 miles of range remaining. The S-Class has arrived with 448 miles of range remaining. So it's actually gone up. Now let me tell you about the EQS. It's the entry level model. So you've got one motor driving the rear wheels, puts out 330 horsepower and 570 newton meters of torque quite heavy because of that 108 kilowatt hour battery. Comes in at around two and a half tons. This long wheelbase S-Class is lighter, believe it or not. Comes in around 2,100 kilos. So it has a three litre straight six turbocharged petrol engine with 435 horsepower and 520 newton meters of torque. It's got a nine speed automatic gearbox with a torque converter driving all four wheels. Let's launch them and race them. Then we'll see what the range is after we thrash them. Okay, let's see how quick this Mercedes S-Class is from 0 to 60 and over the sunny quarter mile. Come on, specialist timing gear, down here, look, down there. See? All right, let's do it, let's launch it. Oh, <laughs> it's smooth. This engine makes a nice sound. Does 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. What's the quarter mile? 13.69. Let's see how quick this EQS is from 0 to 60 and over the standing quarter mile. Got my specialist timing gear here. I'm going to launch it. Three, two, one. Very smooth, relaxing pull away there. So 0 to 60 is 5.86 seconds. What is the quarter mile? This is rather relaxed. What are we going to do? 14.3 seconds. Not exactly rapid, but very very relaxing. Don't know why I'm using this voice. It's my, I'm relaxed because I'm in a Mercedes electric luxury car. It makes you talk like that. Right, we filmed our drag race videos and our launches and stuff. And it's really interesting what's happened. So the trick computer in the S-Class says it has 292 miles of range left, whereas the one in the EQS says it has 328 miles of range left. So this has actually done better when we've been filming all the performance tests and stuff, and they've basically done the exact same thing. Now, if you want to see the drag race that we shot with this, the first one that we've done, click on the pop-out banner up there to go watch the video. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon because we are going to be uploading soon a video where we race this against that. So make sure you're subscribed. Yeah, do it.
Now let's see what these cars are like on a twisty road. I'm gonna put this EQS into sports mode so it makes everything sharper, stiffens up the suspension. It also makes the artificial noise the car makes when you accelerate louder. And I've gotta show you this because it's really odd. If I stop this car and put it into park, I can actually rev it even though it's electric. Listen, it makes a revving sound, sort of electric revving sound. Sounds sort of like someone's drilling something in the distance, but with a bit of reverb. Very odd. Anyway, let's try it on Twisted Road. Odd. So this is a big car, and you notice it when you go down a narrow road. As for the road holding, it seems pretty good. It's heavy, yeah. you don't actually notice it all that much, and it does a great job of going over bumps. Now, I've got an individual setting for the car setup, which softens up the suspension, but keeps everything else sporty. I wonder if that's a bit better. Kind of lets it lean a bit more in bends, but it smooths out the bumps even better. Do you know what? I'm really noticing the, the water bottle in the door bin, the water sloshing around, a walkie-talkie just flailing around in this cubby space because the car is so quiet. <laughs> it's quite odd on a road like this. Whoa! The car was a bit worried then, thought I was gonna hit something. Oh, noticing it's very wide. Oh. <laughs> yes, this can get down a country road at quite a pace, but just the sheer size of it does put you off from going too quickly. But it holds the road well, plenty of grip. It's as good as it needs to be, easily. There's one thing I've noticed though, and that's you get a lot of reflections in these screens here. So they're flickering in the corner of your eye and it just distracts you slightly. Then if you can see it, look at that. Keep on looking over at it. It's not good concentrate where I'm going. I'm going to drive the same bit of road in the S-Class and see how it compares. So once again, I'm going to put it into sport mode. Oh, we've got sport plus here. I'm going to rev it. Oh, that noise sounds very similar to the one in the EQS, just a little less synthesized. Once again, like someone's drilling off in the distance. Let's drive it. This feels a little bit more sporty, dare I say it. You know, it's a huge long wheelbase limousine, but it does feel more sporty. And I think part of the reason for that is that I'm sat lower in it. Steering, quite similar. And even though they've got the suspension in its sportiest setting, Sport Plus, once again, going over bumps really well. So what is different though? Having gears to play with. So obviously I could just put it in automatic, but if I want, I can change gears myself. There's a slight delay between pulling up the paddle and it shifting up. So it's not the hottest, but it's fairly smooth. <laughs> this is good. Once again, goes down a road as quick as you ever need it to, and as quick as you're allowed to legally, and it just holds on nicely. Obviously, this car's got four-wheel drive, so if it was slippy, you got more traction out of corners. It feels a little bit more nimble, dare I say. I think that's to do with the weight difference. You know, it's 400 kilos lighter, which is quite a lot of weight. So I have a bit more confidence going quickly in this than the EQS, but there's not much in it. In fact, you know what, I'm gonna put the suspension into soft setting while having everything else sporty, and it should really glide over these bumps even better. Oh yeah, that is so good the way it does that. Do you know what, I think I prefer driving this on a twisty road. Another reason is that you don't get the flickering reflections because you haven't got that wide expanse off screen. You don't have that distracting you either. Yeah, this car is dynamically superior on a twisty road. Not loads in it, but it does have the edge. Obviously the S-Class isn't most at home on a twisty road. It's better on something like a dual carriageway, just cruising from A to B in utter luxury. And it does feel luxurious here on the inside. I like the interior design of this car. It's interesting, it feels modern. You've got these screens and it's fairly easy to navigate. Obviously you've got your voice commands as well if you want to use them. They're not the best, <laughs> but no voice command is the best as far as I'm concerned. You're better off using your Google Assistant or your Siri. But I do use Android Auto when I'm driving this car. There we go, just put it back on. It's all connected wirelessly. It's got the latest tech pretty much this. And I like this display, this digital driver's display, because it has this 3D effect. It's just utterly nuts, but you can't see it on camera. What you can see though is that three-pointed star on the bonnet. I love that. I love just cruising down a road, seeing that ahead of this big expanse of bonnet. It feels expensive, it feels luxurious. In fact, I like the exterior design of this car as well. It looks smart, elegant, not too overstated. It's a nice looking thing. 
I've now jumped into the EQS and it's definitely a better place to be on the inside than the S-Class, partly because then you can't see the outside of it. I'm not a big fan of the exterior design of this car. It just looks a bit blobby. It's all right in the two-tone paint scheme. That's kind of quite cool, but just in a plain, simple, single color like this car, it doesn't look as special as the S-Class. There is one element of the exterior design I do really like though, and that's the grill. Though obviously it's not a normal grill because it's an electric car, but I do like the way you have this little pattern across the front, which is basically lots of little three-point stars. It's really cool. Inside though, look at it with this like dash, which is basically just three huge screens. There's even one for the passenger. It's nuts. It really does just look next gen compared to the S-Class. In fact, it makes the S-Class look a little bit old. The infotainment system is pretty much identical, though it does have a few more features on this latest version in the EQS. It's easy to use. I like the design of the dash and the way it sweeps around you and this blue leather up here. Though, I do think that the dash is quite high and the view out the windscreen isn't as good as in the S-Class, even though you're sitting slightly higher in the car and there's no big bonnet in front of you, which feels luxurious and no three-point star either. It's a sort of mess. Also, I'm missing the 3D digital effect on the dials here. I don't know why they didn't do it on the EQS, that's really odd. You have all the rest of the stuff, like the huge heads-up display, you've got augmented reality for the satellite navigation, so I do things like actually superimpose arrows on the road in front of you with a heads-up display. And of course, you can have it on the infotainment screen as well. Uh, it's all very, very luxurious and expensive feeling, apart from in a few places, like these air vents, which are plasticky. To be fair, the air vents on the dash in the S-Class are even more plasticky and they look quite ugly. Interior design prefer this, exterior S-Class. As for the driving experience, well, I'm loving just how quiet it is, especially when you put your foot down and overtake. There is no whirring of an engine. It's just instant acceleration and so smooth and so quiet. It really suits this kind of car. It's absolutely awesome. I do like that. And you've got regen for the braking. So you lift off the accelerator and it slows the car and you're obviously reclaiming energy and putting it back in the battery. And you can alter the effect of that using these paddles here. So they're not for gear shifting because there are no gears, there's just one gear. And that just makes it nice and easy to drive in town. You can just control it with your right foot, with the accelerator. The thing I like most of all is just the peace and quiet. Really is relaxing. My only complaint perhaps, brakes. Because of that region effect, they just don't feel as natural to use as the brakes in the S-Class. Speaking of which, let's do a brake test. Right, time to do a brake test. Starting with the EQS. Full emergency stop from 70 miles an hour. How long will this car take to stop? Let's find out. Here we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> How long did it take? 41 meters. That's all right for such a big, heavy car. In fact, it's really impressive. Now it's the S-Class's turn. What's it gonna do? Let's find out. Here we go, brake test. Oh. What we got? 45 meters, it's good, but it's not as good as that EQS. Wonder if the regen braking really helps that EQS? Seems to do, four meters difference. It's almost a car's length, really. Well, not quite one of these cars, but you know what I mean. I'm now gonna compare these cars' comfort levels, and it makes sense to jump in the back seat. I'm starting off in the S-Class, and this being the long wheelbase version, there is loads of room. Look, loads of room, loads all over the place. <laughs> and what I can do is actually move that front seat out of the way. I can go into full relax mode, look, press this button, and this seat is reclining, that's moving out of the way. It's lovely, look at that. <laughs> Oh, what way to travel. And it's really just soft. The air suspension is great at just dealing with bumps, especially when you're going quicker. It really just floats up the road. It's a little bit of tire noise, a little bit of wind whistle, but hardly anything. It's super quiet, super relaxing back here. And I've got various things that I can do, like put my blinds, the blinds are behind me, shut that. Pull this down, use my armrest. I've also got a tablet here if I want to use it to control different features. I don't want to use it right now. It's a relaxing car to travel in, really, really is. And I can make it even more relaxing by just taking control of that seat and getting this footrest to come out and then look. Ah, oh, I don't want to get out of here. But well, I've got to test the EQS now, so I just jump into that. First thing to point out about the EQS is that obviously this is not a long wheelbase car, yet still there's plenty of knee room. Look at that. Headroom isn't quite as good 
as in the S-Class, but it's still fairly decent. I think part of the reason for that is that you're sat on top of the batteries. There is a decent amount of distance between your feet and your knees, so you don't feel like you seeing like that like you're doing some electric cars but i can't quite stretch out as much as in the s-class because this front seat is quite low in fact you sit quite high in the back these seats are different as well because it's got a different seating package they feel firmer than the ones in the s-class but i can still recline them to get super comfy oh yeah and it is super comfy it's quiet in here you know I think I can hear a bit more wind noise from around the windscreen in this car than the S-Class, but that's probably because that sound isn't being drowned out by an engine at the front. I don't get any tyre noise at all. This is really good for like isolating you from the road noise. Really, really impressive. As for the comfort, oh yeah, it's really wafty. It feels a little bit more tied down and less floaty than the S-Class, but it deals with bumps really, really well. In fact, in some ways, it gets less upset by sudden sharp bumps than the S-Class does. It's a real tough one to call. They are both supremely comfortable. I think maybe this has the edge just because you don't have any engine noise. But in terms of stretching out, obviously the long wheelbase S-Class is better for that. Now, if you had a long wheelbase version of this with the chairs in that, that would be my ideal combination. Let's hope Mercedes do a long wheelbase version of this. There is one thing I do wonder about though, and that's the fact that it's got a load of luggage back there. You're only separated from it by a thin tonneau cover. So if it starts rattling around, you're gonna hear it. Don't have that problem in the S-Class because it's in a separate compartment. And that brings you onto these car's boots. Let's say you spent all your cash on a posh new car, so you can't afford your rent. Which of these two has the biggest boot? The most comfortable one. Well, this capacity, 550 litres. Thing is, it's a saloon, so it's a little bit more awkward if you want to carry large items, or if you're very big, you won't be able to get through that gap. However, EQS, nice big hatchback opening, so even fatties can get in here. And the capacity, 610 litres. Plus, look at this. You can fold down the rear seats and really stretch out. Who needs a house? This is fine, I can live in this, it's lovely. I'm waiting for this to close. It's a bit temperamental at times, this. It's working now, it's working. Yeah, you can open it. Yeah, let me out now, hi. Let me out. Uh, ow! <laughs> Got my knuckles on there. The EQS gets Mercedes very latest gadgets, including doors you don't actually have to pull on to open. Look, they'll open automatically for you. Isn't that lovely? Thing is, what happens if someone parks really tight to you? You can bash their car and your car. Well, let's test it with their own product. So if it doesn't work, it's their own fault if their S-Class gets dinged, isn't it? So. Haha, <laughs> thank God there's some sensors in it and they work. Another key bit of tech that I like on these cars is the automatic cruise control. I've got it engaged, it's keeping a safe distance from the car in front, it's auto steering to keep me in lane. It's doing all the hard work and allowing me to chill out and that's really handy when you've got loads of miles to do. Okay, we finally arrived at the track. The cars have done about 200 miles each in total. The S-Class has half a tank of petrol left and it says its remaining range is 246 miles. The EQS only has a quarter of its battery left and it's saying its remaining range is 102 miles. Oh dear. However, now we're gonna hoon them round a track and film them for a track battle where we compare the lap times of the two cars. <laughs> because the obvious thing to do with these limousines, right? Anyway, we're going to do that. We're going to do the same amount of laps in them and see what that does for their remaining range. Right, so I've been hitting these cars round track. It's been an absolute laugh, actually. You'd be surprised what they're like on track. Now, if you want to check that out, I'm actually doing a track battle video and we'll upload it later. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon. That way you'll be alerted when we upload that video. Now, I was giving this some stick and after a while, I've got this warning sign. Inoperative air conditioning, charge high voltage battery. Basically, I've got nothing left in the battery. It's saying a range of seven miles. And it started to reduce the power of the car. So I decided that's enough. We've done enough. Now in total, this car has done 213 miles. Actually did about 14 miles on track, flat out. Started with a quarter of a battery. Now we've got nothing left. <laughs> Just seven miles of range, which should be enough to get it on the truck to get it back to Mercedes-Benz headquarters in Milton Keynes. The S-Class did better. It's got a remaining range of 86 miles and it's got a quarter of a tank of petrol. I reckon we might be able to drive it all the way back to Milton Keynes because obviously we've been hitting it on track and that just drank through the fuel quite alarmingly. However, we did more laps on track in that. We've done 21 miles. So in total, that car's done 222 miles. But there we go. If you want to go long distances, the petrol car is still the answer. However, 
that's not my final verdict. Let's do that now. I know what you're thinking. Matt, we want an actual verdict. Which car would you have? So I'm going to tell you. I would take the EQS. It's the S-Class of the future. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Let me know some other videos you'd like to see in the comments below. You can watch more videos by clicking on those boxes there. And if you click on that box there, you can download the CarWow app. It's completely free. And you can use your camera's phone to scan the number plate of any car and it'll tell you how much it's worth. Just download it, go on.